long time ago, we told you about Vita's products and how they had basically everything in their catalog. Well, to prove that point, here is a stern tube and here is a Vita's prop shaft. <laughs> We're surprised that they even offered this. Um, typically these are just something that you get more locally, but the fact that we could source this and get it all made specifically to our needs was perfect. This is a fiberglass stern tube. You can kind of see the cutlass bearings already in it. Uh, that is going to end up eventually going through here. Now this is a little longer than what we necessarily needed, but it was easier to have them do it a very, very long one and we can chop it down um, once we get it in place and we find out exactly what's necessary. Prop shaft, beautiful, stainless, duplex steel, awesome, with the zinc already on it, tapered. And equally long ago, you may remember where I drilled the pilot hole through each side to give us an idea of exactly where that stern tube was gonna come through and the deadwood, the strut, basically kind of a keel uh, setup that we're gonna make to support that whole structure. Now it's time to bring it to its two inch size to drill that through, hopefully at the right angle, find our center line and make sure that we have everything perfectly parallel and then start building that thing out. Four beast. The goal is to keep this right at about seven and a half degrees. So if I'll just keep stopping periodically, test it to see exactly if I'm going the right angle, I guess. This whole thing will get backfilled in, bonded in place, glassed all around it. So quite frankly, if I'm off a few degrees, it isn't the big deal. I still want to be as close as I possibly can. That is about the angle I need to do that. That's the angle I need to be at. Hopefully I can hold that fairly close there. I hit the max that I could do this hole saw. Um, what I have to do is jump the other side of this bulkhead to the half part and try to chisel this piece loose, this little puck loose, pop that out, then I can push this in further and get the next part. Um, it might take three or four tries before I can get all the way through the hall and get a nice clean run down there. Oh crap. It is so incredibly hot today that I am wearing jeans because I'm gonna be climbing in these types of areas. I knew it. that glass is hard. <laughs> okay, well that gives me a lot of confidence. That stuff is just like chiseling a rock. The problem is that the this bulkhead is a very, very thick one. And with the extra glass on it and stuff, my hole saw only cuts, I don't know what it is, an inch and a half depth. And that inch and a half is barely coming through this bulkhead. So it's not quite giving me that easy to cut out like uh, hole that I was anticipating that it would. Whatever I did appeared to work. Here's the hole piece. <laughs> Got a long way to go before you see that webbing. Actually looks like it's coming right where it's supposed to. 
this is the basic hole just cutting through here. I'm gonna have to go through and grind it out and, and make sure that I'm sitting absolutely straight with this thing. But I, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I can see you. Back there. Actually looks pretty good. Um, just use the die grinder with this little carbide bit on it to enlarge that hole. The biggest thing's gonna be if uh, angle is right. So again, we're shooting for seven and a half, basically. Yeah. Not bad if I say so myself for just uh, eyeballing it. So the next step. Bam! Hey, it's 7.5. Wow. The next thing is going to figure out how far we need to come astern back here. We're going to have 16 inch feathering props on this. The reason why we're going feathering, and we'll go over this later, but it's for that regeneration. If they were folding props, which was what our original plan with, with this was go with like the flexifold or something. Problem is that it's very difficult to get that to actually regen. Feathering works a lot better. So we're gonna go that route, and we are doing a 16 inch blade. This is showing me that I have about an inch, or about uh, 12 inches of clearance. With a 16 inch blade, roughly we need nine inches of clearance. I think you want an inch of haul clearance between the blade tip. Um, but again, I'm going to verify that. So if I'm wrong, it might be a half inch. I, I don't remember for sure, but we will take a look at that. So it means that this would need to come inboard. Big thing is making sure that we have alignment fore and aft proper. The way I'm going to be able to do that is go off of that rib that's inside here that runs right down the center line, sight down there with the laser and get a mark on this and make sure that I am following this hopefully perfect. In this area, in this big void that we see right now, that is going to be filled in all with high density foam, same stuff this is made out of, and then four layers of uh, glass going over the top of that. So it's gonna be a very nice, thick, solid structure here. This isn't the lowest part of the hull. The lowest part of the hull is still up there. So it is roughly protected, but still trying to figure out if we're gonna put like a little foil here in front of that. So there's still some deciding that's going on. I'll talk to the designer more, um, get with the engineers and figure out exactly what needs to be done. But at least I can start this process of laying this out properly. I just sent a text to AB Marine. They told me that for the clearance aft for the prop, basically I need about 30 millimeters where that taper starts basically. So when I take that into account, that 30 millimeters aft here, and then go up right here, we're at 10 and a quarter inches. So that gives us a little over two inches of clearance. And I think that should be safe. All right, next step now is going to be creating the dead wood, the part that's going to end up supporting our stern tube. For that, I'm just going to make a little template out of cardboard, and I can start cutting that out of the uh, foam panels and then start all that glass work. It's going to require a lot of grinding in here. Still have to calculate our fore and aft or side to side trim basically to make sure it's in line. But I do want to pull off this gel coat first because any line that I'm going to put on there would then just be erased once I do that. So I'll get this template made, then grind off this gel coat in preparation for that glass work. Um, and then we'll start laying everything out, the lines out. Lay my troubles to rest, blow the smoke through my cigarette. City lights looking fine, and I know this is my time. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I do when 
when I'm out, so Gives you an idea of what it's supposed to be. I do need to feather it a little bit more. You can see it's still a bit thick through this area. To do the feathering, all I've been using is just two boards screwed to either side as kind of guides, and then just using a long board in between it. And as you can see, guide. Right on that side. The stuff is okay to sand. Um, the foam isn't the hardest thing in the world, but if you see all these little dots in here and the lines, so. The panels I'm using were, um, they ended up being about 30 millimeters a piece. They are left over from one of the bulkheads, some core, so three pieces bonded those together and then fared that down. Now what you're seeing is all the little perforations for the infusion. This had fiberglass on both sides. So when they infuse these panels together, the resin flows through those little holes to get to both sides of it and get the glass to bond. Well, those parts are difficult to uh, cut and they're also difficult to sand. Well worth it once the sand's gonna be hopefully nice and flush and a uh, nice angle and look like it was molded in here from the factory. Got it, what I believe is going to be nice and straight. So time to finally put this bad boy in place. Just thickened up some resin. Butter this thing up. So it's a good bond. I'm somewhere in the middle. Try to find myself again. But life is one big riddle. All the future and what's been. Cause it's the way it goes And I will never know Why you let me go Look to the left, look to the right Nothing can stop me in the night Like I am leaving all the bad stuff And trying to remain so strong I know it's good if I'm on I got it So I let the foam piece cure overnight, cleaned it up, kind of rounded over the edges a bit, and we're going to put our first layers of glass over this. This is a 1708. Yep. This is... Truck spray and mat. Yep. This is 1708, so I'm going to do three layers of it, um, which would be good. This just is going to have kind of the smallest, about an inch and a half of overhang that's going to go onto the hull. That's going to be carried in with the next round after that. Biggest thing is we don't want to build up a lot of bulk around there, because that we have to fare in and try to make that streamline. But this should work just fine. Not used to this. 
I don't know how to act, don't know how to adapt to this situation Not used to this, no I'm not Better let myself give in to love Believe in us, no matter what it does to my heart Not used to this, no I'm not It was like if we were to waste these moments The light poets to me Like loads of will come off at the fingers. <laughs> I feel like a 19th century beggar. Please, sir, may I have some more ribbon? I was thinking more Madonna. <laughs> Look at me, Jim. For the first and fourth third pizza. Working on it. Man, it's gonna keep working in case like little air bubbles pop up. But yeah, we got a fin. Grind that out and do a wrap around there. Yep. Separate piece, just fine. And once this cures. But otherwise, not bad, Johnson. All this is doing is really just making a strong base for when we end up putting the uh, stern tube through. And then when we glass that over, that's going to be what tapers further onto the hull here and gives it really a strength. But I wanted to make sure there's a lot of compression strength in there for that, that tube itself. And that is, I think we're successful in that. I think so. Japan. 